I think, well, whether... If he beats Jeremy Hunt, well, Yeah, course. well, if, which is uh, still an if. Let's remember that, right? I mean, it looks likely, but nothing should be completely ruled out in the mm. current political environment, right? But I think the, uh, the, the, the likelihood of a general election in the autumn is clearly significant, maybe even above 50% probability. Mm. Whether Boris, if he becomes the prime minister, proactively goes to the polls, or whether he's bounced into it, of course, is the big question. But given the numbers in parliament, given all the irreconcilable, at face value at least, irreconcilable positions out there, the chances or probability of a general election is high. Pollsters and Mrs May badly miscalculated when she went to the country, but looking at the, de I mean, we can talk about debacles on both sides of a political divide, so we don't have to get political about this, but the, the mess that the Corbyn shadow cabinet and shadow party is making of anti-Semitism at the moment, it potentially looks like a good time for the Conservatives to go to the country. Would you agree with that or not and get their majority? I think it's incredibly unpredictable, right? I think there's no, for no party, maybe save the Lib Dems that are sort of are having a bit of a revival, um, this would not necessarily be a good time to go to the opinion polls because it's so incredibly unpredictable, particularly if you do it before the exit date, so before the 31st of October, what kind of dynamics will be at play out in the country? It's incredibly difficult to predict. Opinion polls are unreliable, I would say, still. We still haven't really caught up uh, mm. to the extent we perhaps should have with how to capture new forms of opinions and swings from traditional voting patterns, for example. So I think it's unpredictable. Y you know, Boris has an incredible capacity to communicate with the country, with people but it remains unpredictable. So I wouldn't necessarily call it a good time. Yeah. I think it will be bounced into it rather than something he would on, like to do. On, on the Karen's question, uh, just a straw poll here. Let's have an opinion poll. Who's ever been asked to take part in an opinion poll? Ah, that's what I thought. So 100% of people <laughs> in our latest straw poll for CNBC have never been in an opinion poll. I think, poll. You I think you're right. Phone, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you about the growing laundry list, though, for yeah. the, the next leader, because it's obviously delivering on Brexit, <laughs> tackling domestic challenges if there's going to be some form of election around the corner. But then also the international relations. It's been an awful week, or awful fortnight, I should say, challenges with the relationship between the UK and China over Hong Kong and the protests, and then topped off by um, the ambassador row that has meant the relations a bit tense now with the United States. So who is best placed to tackle multiple challenges like that, given the leadership style well, you've seen of both? Well, I think it's, it's uh, I think the way to look at this is that you have a world before and leading up to 31st of October, which is going to be all about getting that Brexit agreement through Parliament and get some sort of tweaks or changes to the withdrawal agreement or at least a package as a whole, including a political declaration with the European Union. So that's the, sort of the first hundred days. So that's a world and a universe in, in and of itself, right? Now, what happens after that, of course, is, is really where the more exciting and interesting things coming in. Who's best place to sort of take Britain to the next stage in its, in its sort of international journey? I wouldn't comment on that, but I do think there is, if we get past this Brexit phase, very uncomfortable Brexit phase, there is, of course, a huge range of opportunities there internationally, including Matt. the trade agenda, including the commercial agenda. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.